everyone, this is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guidance Meditation Call for March 24th, 2020, Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. You might want to ask yourself, How often do you have fun? How often do you enjoy yourself? Some people say, well, that's a silly question. But in reality, it isn't because you're identifying what your fun is. What is it? What is having fun? Fun's part of being happy, joyous, uh, carefree. I just got to float wrong. And we always go to uh, when we were all, all of us, which we are not exempt from, when we were all children. Before we begin to be molded by other thoughts, outside thoughts that ended up, you know, we, we have a lot of thoughts right now in these bodies, but the majority of them aren't ours. They were, you know, instilled in us. They were, you know, kind of imparted to us, but they're not our thoughts. Most of them aren't. Might be confusing to some people when you say that, but in, in reality, it's true. And so childlike doesn't mean you're, you know, a kid again, but you are childlike. So you you do things that, in, in certain cases, that, you know, it's with, within reason, you do certain things that you did that you remember having fun. It's a positive experience. On what you did to have fun, and you know, when when we were kids, most of us, you know, in most cases. We didn't think about all of this stuff, these uh, um, the stresses, the fears, the worries, the anxieties. And you know something? No matter how old these bodies are, and, and I don't mean as far as aging anymore, I mean as far as being in them, you, we carry the childlike frequency. And it doesn't mean that we're irresponsible or that we, you know, don't, you know, don't have commitment or anything like that. It's just that we don't view things intently, you know, seriously. And every step is serious. And this is serious. Boy, we really got to look at this. This is really serious. And we're so, and that adds to our stress factor. Uh, to all of us, and none of us are exempt from it. We, we all have uh, you know, different things, diff different occurrences, uh, different tremors that take place and cause us to become uh, flustered and irritated. And we take things f from a perspective of being way too serious. We take ourselves too seriously. You know, we don't laugh enough at ourselves. We don't have enough fun because we're so embroiled in being older in bodies. And because it negates, well, you know, you gotta watch what you do when you get a certain age because of your bones and everything. You know, those intents are created mostly from what? Us embracing um, the ego mind's incessant thoughts, period. And that's how we convince ourselves and in most cases, and, and, and confidence through the ego uh, where we end up harming ourselves. Now, you can imagine, and this is kind of like a pre-structure, a pre-understanding, that when you have a body that does not age, okay, and literally, because, you know, all of this, this uh, research stuff that's gone on for decades, in centuries really hasn't gotten us anywhere. All right? It really hasn't. It's the same old, same old. 
just a different set of clothes. So when we look at the fact that we have uh, immortal bodies, that, that these bodies don't age anymore. So guess what? You put yourself at 30 years old uh, in a chamber and you don't age anymore. So guess you don't have to worry about breaking bones or anything because number one, you can be childlike and have an absolute hilarious ball whenever you choose to. Innocent, non-destructive, you know, you say, I'm gonna go sit and swing. I'm gonna go just, I'm gonna go stare at the sky and the trees. You know, I'm just gonna do things that are footloose, fancy free, and I just really am not uh, in seriousness, uh, depression and anxiety and fear. All of those things that in all due respect to ourselves, we create them. So that's why we don't have a lot of fun. And fun doesn't mean that we go out, we buy a yacht or a plane or something and we go, oh, this is fun. It is what you experience with you, with you, with yourself. It's all, that's what it is. And you can tell that the rest of our brothers and sisters on this planet, just by viewing, not judging, just by taking it in, you see how many are having fun. How many, how many of you actually play? Really? Do you ever ask yourself that? How often do I really play? Sounds like a crazy question at first, but then when you say give me, because after all, we're all journeying within ourselves. So we say to ourselves, when was the last time I played? Well, I'm an adult, that's just for kids. You see what we do? It's the ego that comes in trashes it completely. It rationalizes to us that it dictates to us is that you can't do those things because you're too old to do them. Now, when we connect too old, what do you think that does? It's a cascading effect on us. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean that we know it clearly. It's very subtle and it basically negates us from playing. It really does. You know it would be fun that somebody in this group, and by the way, we're over 60 million people on this planet, and I won't include the ones that are off planet that have contacted me, but the fact of the matter is that are participating in this global guided meditation call on a daily basis. So picture this. One of you comes up with a project, and the project involves this. You go and you buy land that no one would want, number one, okay? We all see it, we drive around and everything. Wow, well, I wouldn't want that, there's really, it's just really dead looking, it's just it's no, nothing. And so you go in, you buy this land no one else wants, and you don't do it for gain, you buy it to refurbish it, to add to it, to beautify it. You bring in uh, different uh, indigenous trees, shrubs, plants. You know, you uh, you bring in a water area. And I don't mean, you know, but water, you, you view it. It's so relaxing. You bring in a water area and uh, filter system and everything. And you put benches and grasses and everything around. Kind of a, you create a beautiful kind of a mini paradise area. And you put in things where uh, people can play. What, what uh, older kids, because we're all older kids, okay? And the older kids, what would older kids like to do if they really weren't embarrassed and they had a place to go play? And I'm not talking about gambling casinos and all that crap. I'm talking about free, easy uh, access to just playing. And I'm not talking about Disney World or Disneyland or Universal Studios. I'm talking about something that regenerates our understanding that we can always play no matter how much experience we take in in this existence in these bodies, because it's gonna change. Because a lot of people will be immortal. They won't, their bodies won't age. So you imagine doing a project like that 
At first, people would probably, and who cares what people think? That's that's something else that we'll we'll explore. Who cares what people think, really? All right. We love them all. We love ourselves, and it, whatever their it's their prerogative, whatever they think, it's not that big deal. See, we take that too. It's literal. We we literally absorb that stuff and worry about it. How do I look? You know, how am I going to be accepted? Are they going to like me? I want to be liked so much, and that's that's all ego and bicameral uh, civilization. Now you imagine that you're immortal and you start talking with others and you say, you know, I, I've developed a project and I'm going to be creating play lands or play areas for all of us, where you could go in and maybe go down a slide and or um, uh, sit on a swing and I designed the swing so they're really cool where you could kind of get into some kind of a mechanism and and, uh, let them just, you know, and just sit there and swing. And it sounds kind of simple and it sounds way out of context to what the civilization's been trained to believe. But in reality, what happens when you don't play? What happens? A lot of us don't think about it. But we, we kind of lose something. As kids, we couldn't wait to get out and do things, play. You know? And we'd always invent something. We really didn't need anything. We could get some sticks or whatever, or you know, some of us, you know, use a deck of cards and use wooden clothespins and make our bikes sound like motors, you know. And for us, it was great. And we would you, you invent games and things. What happened? Why has the civilization been so controlled externally that, oh, that's, that you're, a, there's a bunch of Fruit Loops out in that park playing on the swings and they're all adults and they're laughing and they're having a great time. You know, these perspectives aren't really visited a lot and they should be because you know what? We're all childlike. And, and to literally not connect with that wonderful energy within us is it's a shame. It really is. And as we, as the bodies age, see, of which they will not do anymore, so it's going to be a whole different perspective, a whole different application for those who decide to be young again, because not everybody will. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, even you can even, it's, how would I put it? It's so refreshing and enlightening for ourselves to dip in to that childlike energy that we all have. And we all do. Say. Where, you know, you would look at something and say, yeah, that's neat. Have you ever gone to a toy store? Right? And you start walking aisles and looking at things. And you say, you know, I'm really, I, I have childlike energy within me. But I've never explored anything like that. But I'm going to. I'm going to go to a toy store and look at it. See, and people are there. But the, here's the problem. They're worried what other people would think. Well, they'll just think I'm buying something for, you know, even if I don't have kids, buying them for a kid or something like that. But it's interesting that when you start exploring that, you become more alive in a way. Your energy, your frequency is lifted. You know, you start tapping in because you're not you're, you're not any different than the kid you were at three, four, five, six. You're not any different. The body just got bigger, and you experience things, but you didn't know how to filter them out when they were not necessary to absorb and put into the subconscious mind. So, you, you know, we take on a lot of weight, baggage. Uh, a lot of us don't know how to process it, so it automatically is registered in the subconscious mind, in that vault, and it stays there. And sometimes it'll dictate to us, and it'll seduce us back into that past. Uh, but as children, we don't we don't really visit uh, when we were experiencing childhood. You know, some have had traumatic situations, some have had uh, not too pleasant. So they, they don't 
uh, forgive those situations for themselves. And when we talk about going way deep um, and forgiving everything, that's partially what we're talking about. You go all the way back in your childhood and any stinging or unpleasant things you forgive and let go. It's amazing what it does for you. Permanently, by the way. Uh, it's not temporary. But play is so important for all of us. Clean, fun, simple, easy play where we can just, for that period of time, recharge the childlike energy within us. Recharge it, bring the, mem- bring the imagination back front and center. Have fun, play, you know? You ever thought about it, when if you, if you ever done something that you really, 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 just really have fun with, and you have that kind of a, of a wave comes over you of just complete satisfaction and joy. And for a moment, you feel young again. You ever done that? You're doing something. You say to yourself, I really like doing this. Oh, I wish I could do this all the time. Because to me, it isn't work. It's like I'm playing. Yet I get so much satisfaction and fulfillment out of it. And it it, it, it just opens me up to such enthusiasm and happiness that I just enjoy doing it. You imagine if each and every one of us came into that understanding, how things would change. Where no one's in drudgery and in, 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 in looking at the fact and saying, oh, I've got to do this because I have to make money and I have to be able to pay the bills and I really don't like it. I mean, I could deal with it, it's okay, but it's nothing super fantastic. And so we we just kind of mosey along. And these are things that will become more and more awake within each and every one of us as we begin to shift in our new lives, in these new technologies, in the wealth distribution, all these things that are getting ready to descend uh, and saturate, which means we're at fifth density. I'm going to tell you something, third density, this would never be happening, ever. Okay? And a lot of people just aren't aware that they are not in 3D anymore. You, you know, it's like by camera. Okay? And I've yet given it, 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 uh, examples of that. By camera means that you have to be governed, you have to be led have to be thought for, period. And you, you really think you're independent, but you're not because you're relying on all the external authority to tell you how to believe, what to believe, how to do this, when to do this, so on and so forth. And But yet, 3,000 years ago, this civilization came out of bicameral and into consciousness, but yet it doesn't understand that it's conscious so it still believes and in, in resides in the residual effect of bicameral civilization. Right and left brain talking to one another. That's why so many people hear voices. So you, you begin to realize that in, in right now, we believe we're in 3D, see? It's similar to bicameral, but we're not. We're in 5D. And so people believe that they're still in 3D, so they're still in 3D. But they're, isn't it funny? But they're not. And the reason that there's that void is because they haven't gone within themselves. They haven't embraced the God that they are. You know? And it's their choice. And it doesn't make them bad or any different than us because we were all created out of deep eternal love. So it just is there not knowing. It's the ignorance that some of us carry that we don't know. That's why we don't play, see? That's why we don't embrace our childlike energy and have fun and enjoy and relax and walk with ease or skip down the road or throw a rock across the water and watch it skip or try to get one to skip, you know? 
It's just, or just get in, in an old aluminum boat, sit on the water, or look at some swing sets. It's not dangerous to go get on a swing and just kind of swing a little bit, or just sit there. You remember as a kid, you'd put your arms on the on the ropes or the chains, and you just kind of swing around and look around and stuff. You would remember you would look down at your feet, kind of kick the dirt a little bit. Simple stuff. And things that, 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 that children do, we've all done. It's, it hasn't changed. Maybe changed because of the electronics and everything, and, and more and more just, you know, they're in their house uh, doing playing with electronics and stuff. But it's about play. It's all of us coming into full circle and understanding with who and what we are. A journey within, and so many of us have a fear of meeting the God within us. It's not religion. It has nothing to do with religion. That's man-made. It is it, it's, it's discovering the magnificence that we are. The stupendous, omnipotently divine perfection that we are. All of us. Every single one of us. And it is embracing that and understanding is that, you know, I, I, I have childlike energy. It's hard of me. I remember when I did things as a kid and I just had such a ball doing it. And everything, I would ask questions about everything. Of course, you know, bigger bodied kids would get frustrated because they were serious. They were older and they had to look at the things as serious life was serious and big problems and responsibilities and stress and fear you see how that works you know? I bet you if you wanted to you could you could go and meet and, and watch like through a window or, or from afar yourself when you were playing when you were a kid and get that and, and understand that you embrace that feeling which is wonderful feeling. It's very free. It's very relaxed. And it is way far away from serious. It's fun. You know? How many of us sit in constant... I get letters from people all over this planet telling me how lonely they are, how sad they are, how depressed they are. And they do it themselves. And they don't know it. But there's, it isn't really debatable at all. We do all the things that we experience, we create. It's, it's an inevitability. So doesn't it make sense to become knowledgeable and aware of who and what we are by going within? I can't tell you how many people have said to me when I pose the question to them, have you ever thought about going within yourself? You know, meeting the, the perfection, the divinity, the God that you are, however you want to say it, uh, without feeling guilty is silly um, and, and a lot of people grown successful businessmen women will say I have an issue with that I, uh, you have an issue with that yeah I do I have an issue with that what is what is the issue I'm afraid of what I'll find that's 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 one of the biggest answers I'm afraid of what I will find isn't that something why would you fear meeting the love that you are, the God that you are, the peace that you are, the joy that you are? You're not going to go in there and find a dismal, despicable, goopy, rotting thing. You see, we all deserve the best of everything. Bar none, all of us, each and every single one of us. Doesn't it make sense that don't we deserve to play? Don't we deserve to be childlike whenever we feel like it? Don't we deserve to say, you know what? This life is absolutely stupendous right now. No matter what you're experiencing, no matter what you're thinking, and I'm going to go play. Hey, Jack, where are you going? Go play. You're what? 
you, you on a baseball game or something? No, I'm going to go play. There's a playground, there's a park down here uh, where I live, and I'm just going to go sit on a swing and do nothing. And I'm going to start thinking about how grateful I am. And I'm going to practice that. You know? Or I'm going to go take a walk in a nature preserve and just sit on a bench and watch the water. You know, seriously. Play. Play is this meditation. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that you want to do, relax our bodies. That's another thing. As kids, did we think of a bit, did we worry about being stressed and tense? No. Because we were too busy having fun. Playing. And so when we relax our body, totally let everything fall away. Any attachment you have, any stress you're feeling, you can always tell where your stress level is. Because if you, you check your shoulders, check your shoulders, and you say to yourself, now they may appear normal. And to you, you don't think, you know twice about it. And you say, okay, let's shoulders, let's drop. And you will be amazed on how tense you are when your shoulders and how far they drop, okay? And we carry that and we don't know it. So we drop the shoulders, we let everything fall off of us. Analogy and visualization for this civilization is omnipotently powerful. We would be so much further ahead in our technologies for the greater good of all of us had we would have done everything in pictures instead of these ridiculous chase your tail equations. So, we visualize the balloon, the hot air balloon with the ballast with all the sandbags in it. And we want to, we want to get way up into the beautiful blue sky and see the planet. You know, especially during the fall when all the leaves are in full color and you're you're up in a hot air balloon, you look around, and it's just absolutely phenomenal because we're enjoying the beauty that we all are when we look at something like that in a hot air balloon. That's why we're always looking at such beautiful things on this planet, you know, like traveling and driving here, viewing water and mountains, beaches and everything because we're in such awe, we don't realize that we created it. Seriously. People say, well, I wasn't, I, you know, I'm only 70 years old. I didn't create, I, I, this planet's a lot older than that. Sure it is. But you're part of the collective consciousness of this planet. Pure consciousness. And that's what creates everything that you see. That's what created this planet and Gaia. The same source that created us. So that's the collective consciousness, pure consciousness. That's beyond the God. So you relax the body. You let everything go. And it, you know, I know it's difficult. We Sometimes we just hang on to things. We just, be, boy, can't let that go. I know this, 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 and this. But I just, I, I gotta, I gotta hold on to this. And it's, it's a miserable thing. And it's depressing and stressful. But we hold on to it. So we just let it go. You know, nothing, the only thing that's gonna happen is, you see, you're going to be lighter and happier by letting it go. Okay. So you drop everything, relax the body. As you relax the body, we want to move into the now. And the now is all we have. Do you really think we have the past? The past is dead. And, and some of us, we don't know it. We, it's not like I think. We're not conscious about it. Maybe in some ways. But we go into that subconscious room, we unlock the vault door, and we see all this baggage in there, and we drag it into our future and create our future. Isn't that something? Rather than being in the now and going, I'm creating my future in the now, right now as I desire I want it to be. And that's how we create our future in the now. We don't go into the deadness of the past. It's over. It's not coming back. The only 
other way it comes back is if you drag it into the future and relive your dead past in the future. So in the now, we are literally tailoring our future. It, and our intention is setting things in motion and creating a paradise and a God planet. That's what's happening. And so, as we do that, each and every one of us, just like snowflakes, we're all different. It's true, too. Not one of us are exact. Even identical twins. We are not exact. None of us. Okay? We, and we have a little bit of shift here, a little bit of curve here, a little bit of difference here. So, we're individual gods that are one. Interesting. Individual gods that are one. And so the now, only what the moment brings, it is the space between the heartbeat. That's the now. And it's fleeting. And it's quick. And if you don't, if you aren't careful, you'll miss the now. Every second you will miss the now because your head is in the future. It doesn't exist. And your head is in the past that is dead long ago because every second becomes the past. And the only thing that you ever have is the now. That's where we create. That's where we experience joy in the now with the gods that we are. And it stills the ego mind. That noise that we all have, and I haven't met anybody yet that's exempt from it. Where we have this chatter, these thoughts, they're incessant. They come in. Sometimes they'll cold cock us and blindside us. And they're really not our thoughts. That's why they're so strange. Where the heck did I get that thought? Because it wasn't yours. That's why it sounds, feels so strange. And so you, you begin, you remember, you can walk through a group of your brothers and sisters in a busy area or someplace, and you can literally walk right into their thoughts. I kid you not. A lot of people don't know that. But since we are finitely connected to each and every one of us in all life, in all existence, in all particles of existence, we don't realize that you could be in a huge group of people that you don't know and walk right through them, and, and they don't even know each other, and they're in, you know, you're running here, running there, and you're, you literally walk through their thoughts. Thoughts are energy, say, that they've created. As soon as they embrace those thoughts, they become realities to them. And so you walk through those thoughts. And that's the subconscious. And the combination of the ego mind. And that's the noise. That's why so many people don't sleep well. That's why they have almost insomnia at times. Uh, because of the fact that their, their mind is in such high gear with so many things that they can't sleep. They can't relax. They can't play. They can't have fun. They're just literally frozen, being bombarded with all these thoughts, stresses, fears, and worries. And they aren't aware that they're embracing those thoughts and they're creating them into reality. And the funny thing is, they're just thoughts. Fear starts with a thought. And as soon as we embrace that thought and create it into a reality, that's how powerful we all are. And when we do that, it becomes a reality that we end up experiencing. See? So it's really important to move into the now, relax the body, and still the mind subconscious and ego. When you still the subconscious mind, you're able to reprogram it. Say, you drop away, forgive, and eliminate all of that baggage. You don't need it anymore. You 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 have peace uh, and, and forgiveness and whatever experience it may have been in your past, and it's over. So you're free. You free yourself to experience the now and create your future. See, and now we want to breathe. Breathing is so empowering for the body. It's actually so empowering to allow us and to, and to guide us beyond consciousness. 
and we breath in through the nose and we breath out through the mouth. Most of us shallow breathe on this planet. What is that? What is shallow breathing? It means that you aren't even aware of your breathing. You just take it for granted. Well, I have lungs and heart and everything, so uh, you know I've got to breathe, so I'll just breathe. And I, it, you know, it's fine with me. You know, I shallow breathe. But when you focus on your breathing, and the breathing is only in the now, it's not the past, it's not the future. It is only the now. So when you focus on your breathing, your breath in through the nose. You breath it in. You understand that frequency can be converted to liquid of any form. You can you can convert it to anything you choose, anything, however you choose it to be. So as you breathe in air, oxygen, it is a high frequency. It's not a negative frequency. It's very high. Why? Because it sustains your body. It gives your body life. If you did not have it to breathe, the body would cease, and the God would leave the body. So the breath. That's how important it is. And so, as you breath in, you take that breath in and picture yourself as the breath goes from the sacral chakra. Right? Get a picture, a color picture, of a representation of the chakra system in the body. Visualize it. And when you breathe, when you breath in, you breath in. You take that wonderful energy and you pull it from the sacral chakra. All the way lower abdomen, upper abdomen, all the way into the heart chakra, all the way into the throat chakra, all the way up through the head, through all the chakras, up through the back of the head, and then condense it into liquid energy, fluid consciousness, and literally bathe the pineal gland in it, and have it cascade continually up through. Out and around and back up through. So when it goes out, you breath out, and it comes around, and you pull it back in. And by doing this, you're focusing on your chakras, your etheric energy points that literally connect you and your body as one. And those points, when we understand them more and more. You can take yourself beyond consciousness into particles of existence, into all particles of existence. We're talking quantum, hyperquantum. I mean, just literally anywhere there is anywhere. There's always anywhere. There's never nowhere. There's always anywhere. So, as you're breathing this in, and this is energy. It's, it, you know, we look at it as air, but it's actually energy. It's a frequency. So, as we pull it in, we breath in divine positive energy. Where does that come from? It comes from the collective consciousness of this planet Earth, Gaia, the universes. It comes from Source Creation of that which created us out of deep eternal love. It comes from pure consciousness. Of which we are, and it, it it goes in through the God within you and through the heart mind. It does not come in through the ego mind. If you go into the ego mind, you start hearing voices, and that means it's in the bicameral mode, and the right and left brain are talking to each other. That's where the voices come from with people. So. You begin to realize that this divine pause of energy communicates with you, and it says to you, "You have everything you ever could ever use or need. You're fully equipped. You have all the bells and whistles. There aren't any options available for you because you have them all. And it, it is okay to play. It is just hunky dory, fine and dandy." To play, however we choose to play, in joy and bliss and happiness, it's wonderful to play. Now, as we as we as we push the breath out, as we exhale, remember we cycle. We go up, out, around, and back in. 
ego mind tries to interfere at times, okay? But we know the ego mind. It's been with us from the beginning, say. So we know. We say, ego mind, you're not in charge here. I love you, but you're not in charge, so take a seat. Step aside. And eventually the ego mind starts to understand that you mean business, and it will just try to do everything it can to keep you in its corral. But eventually, it will begin to understand that you don't need it anymore. And it will eventually leave you. This is all a process. It's all a step-by-step. It is us making that understanding with ourselves and coming to a full conclusion is that the journey within is my freedom. The journey within is my power. The journey within is my avenue to total bliss and joy. When I meet my God within me, I am in total bliss and joy 24-7. Why wouldn't we want to do that always? Why do you think Buddha sat for days in one position doing exactly that? And you begin to understand that this outside world is for us to play in. And I'm not talking about negative play and low frequency play. I'm talking about fun, lighthearted play where you encourage life and you value all life as the highest value in the universe. So we, we, we literally operate in the heart mind. We do not operate in the ego mind. The heart mind oversees the ego mind, not the ego mind over the heart mind. When the heart mind oversees the ego mind, which is the heart mind is much more powerful, your emotion, your love, your joy, your freedom, uh, your your ease oversees the ego mind, and then you pluck the thoughts that you want to create into reality because you're doing it through the heart mind, and. We are with the God within us. Each and every one of us, doesn't matter what we've done, anything. Each and every one of us have the kingdom of God within us. That's absolutely paramount to understand, absorb, embrace. So we are all that there ever is, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. The rest is up to us to discover the true, deep, eternal love and joy and bliss that we are. So we have others with us. We have the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. Yes, they are real. They are fantasies. And they've been with us a very long time, since the beginning. And the reason we don't see them like we see each other is they just vibrate at a higher frequency than we do. We're getting there, okay? And we will see them more and more, more frequently. I've seen many, as well as many of us have seen many. They pop up in stores, social gatherings, family gatherings. They just appear there, okay? They, they aren't dressed like, uh, you know, they don't have their wings full spread and everything. They look like you and I, but they're there to deliver a message. And we're, 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 when we're in consciousness and we know that we have the God within us, we pick that message up very quickly through our heart mind. Could be anything. The last one I met uh, basically said to me, as I walked into this shop, and he's just sitting there and his eyes were as big as silver dollars. And he looked around, he looked at me and he said, I go, how are you? He said, I am just in complete joy to be, isn't it wonderful to be in this body? That's what he said. I am filled with joy to be in this body. Now, he didn't look like he was anything out of the ordinary. You know, he had a, like a, a really loose-fitting coat, little jacket and everything. And that was it. He left. Um, he went out the front of the shop. He turned right. He looked over his shoulder briefly, and then he was gone. He was gone. A lot of these things happen, but we're so we're so 
involved in bicameralism that we missed them. Now, we also know that they all vibrate of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest and deepest gratitude. They couldn't be in this meditation if they didn't. And we have the Ascended Masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Sananda Jesus, El Moria, Abundantia, Hell, Thought, many, many, many more. And so who are they? Who are they? An Ascended Master. Well, they have chosen to leave the body and, and they have been able to not reincarnate, not to be forced to reincarnate. And so they maintain God form, which is, it's a theric form. It's, it's, it's pure energy frequency. And that's what's inside of us. So we ascend into the body to experience physical, okay, material, physical touch, smell, taste, you know, emotion, heart, mind. And they have mastered the, their ascension, so they have obviously different frequency. They can come back in the physical form to do certain quick things that they would like to do and then leave. See? They can be many different people at many different times, such as Francis Bacon, such as uh, St. Germain, um, and others too. He's not the only one. So they are with us, and they are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love, and the highest and deepest gratitude. So we're all one here. We're all together. And we're all vibrating at the highest frequency of deep eternal love of that which created us through source creation. So, arm in arm, hand in hand, so to speak, we form this halo, this circle of light. And as we all connect as one, you don't see us in physical form. All you see is the light. And the, the reason the light is so brilliant and grays out the darkness of space is because it's deep eternal love, light, frequency, energy. And it is absolutely brilliant. So it literally lights up everything. And we begin to lift ourselves, levitate ourselves above the planet. When we do this, there's a gossamer field that we start to see. We also see this massive crystalline tower. And the tower bridges the etheric and the physical. And it literally floods all life on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, in this now, in this meditation, the circle of light with pure deep eternal love and the deepest of gratitude it floods everyone saturating flooding saturating and bathing everyone constantly eternally not to stop and the, the gossamer field has these brilliant reflective particles in it. and it is a reminder for us as we ascend as we levitate as we move up and as we're doing that we have the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is the column that reminds us that we are the power of healing. We have the violet, blue, purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is the column that reminds us of our power, of our resolve, of our strength. We have the white fire. This is the column that reminds us the white fire is our armor. It, it vibrates at such a high frequency of deep eternal love and gratitude. And it protects us 24-7, always, eternally. And the only way it can be dissipated is the only way it can be dissipated is through us lowering ourselves low enough in lower dark matter frequencies or lower survival matter frequencies that we open the door to all of those low dark matter frequencies. So guess what? We choose not to lower those frequencies to that extent. So we are constantly protected with the white fire, our armor. Now we have the purple transmuting flame. When we, if we lower our frequencies, we invite in low frequencies, okay? We do this. The low frequencies can attach themselves to us and cause issue with us. Well, when we're conscious and we understand who and what we are, 
to a certain extent, we then are able to bring in the purple transmuting flame. This pal reminds us that we can literally transmute all of that, all the negative attachments and influences into neutralized substance. And then we can literally vacuum it off, send it back to the great central sun or source creation, which created all for repurposing. Then we have the column to remind us of the violet ray. The violet ray we bring in and we purify the area that we just mitigated and sent back to source creation for repurposing. We are very powerful beings. This is all real. We are supreme reality. And so when we understand that with ourselves, in our own direction, in our own way, in our own decision, in our own embrace of the gods we are. We have the golden white pink light of pure deep eternal love. And that is source creation. And that is what source creation made us from. And it's the column of all columns that reminds us that we are the God, each and every one of us. Within this body, each and every one of us hold the kingdom of God. The God is not in the sky. The God is not in heaven. They tried to take that God from us, from man, and it no longer succeeds. So, we immediately are, those of us who have physical form, are floating outside the body. And so what we do is that we immediately begin to call out to all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. So we call out to them. And only those who are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love can join us in this meditation, in this, in this circle of light, in the highest and deepest eternal gratitude. Now, they're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, and benevolence. And they come, and they come in the Googleplexes. A Googleplex fills this universe. They come in the trillions of Googleplexes from every direction. Arm in arm, hand in hand, they join us in this now in this circle of light and this meditation. Their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. They are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are in the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. And we are all one. We are all love and our godlike energy is absolutely everywhere, continues to intensify and expand. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, of Garta, beneath earth. Many, many, many civilizations and only those who are of the highest deepest eternal love from the highest deepest eternal love can join us this meditation in this now in this circle of light and the highest and deepest gratitude they're in full compassion non-judgment non-ego non-negativity stillness of mind gentleness kindness generosity humbleness bliss joy peace tranquility and benevolence and they come in the billions, arm in arm, hand in hand. There are gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. They're of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest gratitude and the deepest of, and the highest of eternal love. And we're all one. And we're all love. And our godlike energy is absolutely everywhere continues to intensify and expand. We call upon the Galactics, off-world, many, many, many civilizations. Just a fraction of familiarity 
Pleiadians, Arcturians, Andromeda, and Syrians. Only those who have the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest and deepest gratitude can join us in this now, in this meditation, in the circle of light. They're in full compassion, non judgment, non ego, non negativity, stillness of mind, generosity, gentleness, kindness, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence. And they come in the billions, arm in arm, hand in hand. They're gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. They join us in this now, in this circle of light, this meditation. They are over the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest gratitude, the highest of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest gratitude, and the highest of deepest eternal love. And we are all one. We are all love. And our God light energy is absolutely everywhere. And it continues to intensify and expand. And they have been with us in our evolution, in our enlightenment, in our ascension, and freeing ourselves from our own self imposed bondage and slavery. We call upon all of our loved ones, all of those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've been having. Only those from the highest, deepest eternal love, from the highest, deepest eternal love, can join us in this now, this meditation, this circle of life, the highest and deepest eternal gratitude. They're in full compassion, non judgment, non ego, non negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility and benevolence. And they come in the billions, arm in arm, hand in hand. Their God with our gods, our gods with theirs. In this meditation, this now, in this circle of light, they're of the highest, of deepest, deepest, deepest gratitude the highest and deepest eternal love. We are of the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest gratitude and the highest and deepest eternal love. We are all one and we are all love. And our God light energy is absolutely everywhere. And it continues to intensify and expand. We call upon all the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms on and above and below this planet Earth Gaia, in this now, in this circle of light, in this meditation. And only those who are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, from the highest, deepest eternal love, of the highest, deepest eternal love, and the highest and deepest eternal gratitude can be with us. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, benevolence, tranquility. And there are trillions and trillions of them. And just to name a few, fairies, the sprites, the elves, the dwarves, the gnomes, the trees, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, many, many, many more shapes, sizes, colors, forms, configurations of which we have never seen before. Arm in arm, hand in hand, they are with us in this now, in this meditation, this circle of life. They are of the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. We are of the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. And we are all in the highest and deepest eternal love. And we are all one. And we are all love. And our God light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And continues to intensify and expand. We look up and we see our meditative sphere. 
it said center circle. We all created this sphere over two years ago. It holds all of our meditations in perpetual motion. Activity. Continuing to intensify and expand. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of meditations of the purest, deepest, eternal love, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, gentleness, kindness. This fear can be seen, heard, and felt in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. You can feel it as it floods you continuously. It saturates each and every one of us, both our physical and etherical form. It literally bathes us in pure, deep, eternal love and pure, deep, eternal gratitude. It literally lifts us. It brings us into pure consciousness of understanding. And today, it communicates such a high feeling of bliss. We're motivated to play, to enjoy, to get in a swing, to walk in the park, to breathe, to focus, to embrace every single move every breath we take in complete celebration and deep gratitude and deep eternal love. Play. All of us. It's what's part of us. A childlike energy. Play. Joy. Discover the bliss that you truly are. We look down upon this planet Earth, Gaia. We see all of our brothers and sisters. We see all life, the highest value in the universe. But they too are being flooded with deep, eternal love and deep, eternal gratitude. They too are being lifted. Frequency is lifted. We're all in 5D. Let's play. Let's bring our childhood imagination front and center. Let's enjoy everything, every breath, every step. Enjoy your meditation and return to post to self.
Take this with you the rest of the day, into the evening, into the night, and the following morning. Play. Enjoy who you are. Because you are play, your joy, your bliss, your happiness, your prosperity, your abundance. Embrace it. Your supreme reality. Play. We'll be back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. And tomorrow night we will have a multifaceted time for change call at 9 p.m. Eastern.